Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Sean and recently I got back from a I think 12 day trip to Hawaii. I went to Maui for my cousin's wedding. In the coming weeks I might do a video of that trip so if that interests you keep your eyes peeled for that. Birds! Anyway, so, I got back a couple days ago and I wanted to celebrate by going to the bookstore. But first, I actually got a book on Maui. I was in the town of Lahaina, which is a real big kind of tourist town. And I went on Google Maps and I looked up like bookstores near me. And so I went to one a couple blocks away. They did have a signed book by David McCullough, the American history author. And I was really tempted to get that, but it was just in terrible shape, the book. And it was only priced at $4. Now, as much as a sucker I am for signed books, and at $4, you can just see if I passed on that, just how bad of shape it was. I just didn't really want to get it. Because I just knew since it's signed, I would never want to get rid of it. And plus it's David McCullough, an author I definitely know. But... It was in just such bad shape, I was just like, oh, I don't even want this. Even like free, I wouldn't have really wanted it. So I got another book, Beloved by Toni Morrison. And this is a book off the top 1000 list by James Mustich. A thousand books to read before you die. So I wanted to get something from the bookstore just to support them. And this is a book on the top 1000 list. So. I got it. I don't know anything what it is about, so trying it fresh. But anyway, yesterday I went to the local bookstore to celebrate coming home, and I really did not have much money to spend, and I definitely did not have any space on my bookshelf. My bookshelf is full. So I bought 19 <laughs> books. First off, I got several books from Graham Greene. Only one of these is actually on the top 1000 list. I have read four books by Graham Greene and I have done a review of one of his books on my channel, The Power and the Glory. So I'll put that up there if you want to go check that out. I'll also post it at the end of this video. Graham Greene, even though he's not my favorite writer and he's not, I think, one of the most talented writers ever, I still have enjoyed every book I've tried from him. So just looking at the bookstore yesterday, I kind of realized that Graham Greene is a must-buy author. I really want to try every book he's written because all four books I've tried from him I've enjoyed. So the books I got are, well, I got all the Graham Greene books that were there that I didn't have. They were... The Man Within, which I think is his debut novel, actually. Also, The End of the Affair, which I think is on the top 1000 list. The Heart of the Matter. Travels with My Aunt, which from the title, I thought this would be like a non-fiction book where he's just talking about his travels with his aunt. So I was kind of like boring, but it was Graham Greene, so I was like, I'll get that anyway. But I think this is actually a novel, so... That's good. I don't really like nonfiction books generally. The Quiet American, which is not on the top 1000 list, but reading a lot of Graham Greene reviews, a lot of readers of Graham Greene have listed this book, The Quiet American, as one of their favorite books by him. So I'm definitely most interested in giving this one a read. And last for the Graham Greene books was The Human Factor. Since it was his debut novel, I will probably read The Man Within first, even though it's not the top 1000 book, just because when I can, I like to try reading the author's first book and going sequentially. So anyway, since I know I like Graham Greene and I want to read everything by him, this is the first book I think I'll try next. But okay, other books I got include... Elizabeth Gaskell. This is Cranford and Cousin Phillips. Cranford is the book on the top 1000 list, so I'm definitely going to give that book a read. And the other book, Cousin Phillips, I guess I may just try it, but it'll probably be a fairly short lease, especially if I don't like Cranford. I don't know anything about this author. I've never heard of her before or this book. 
By the way, all of these books moving forward are off the top 1000 list, so I'm not going to bother saying that anymore. The next book is Virgil the Aeneid. I don't know anything about this book except that I think it is a play, so I'm interested in it. Next, I am really kind of pessimistic about it. Even though I do like Russian writers, I'm not sure I'll like this next book just because of the theme, I guess. But it is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I've heard of this book forever, of course. I know a lot of readers have liked this book, but I don't know. So I'm really iffy about this book. I don't know what to think. I think I may have actually tried reading this before and I definitely did not get very far if I did. But anyway, I'm curious to read it, but I am fairly pessimistic. Next is Henry James, The Portrait of a Lady. I don't know anything about this book at all, except I think I have heard of this title maybe. And I think I have heard of Henry James but I don't really know anything about him or the book otherwise. I mean, I can't tell you a thing what it may be about. And that's the way I like to read books. I like to go into books completely blind, not knowing anything about them, so that way I don't have any expectations. Either the writer will pull me in with their writing, or they will not. Next, I have no clue how to pronounce this name, but Daphne du Maurier? Rebecca. So I think I saw the movie years and years and years back, but I don't remember a thing about it, except I think there was like a house by the sea. I am kind of pessimistic about this book. I heard that this book has like one of the best opening sentences like ever. And so I read the first sentence like about a year back and I was just kind of like, Eh, that doesn't seem real special at all. So anyway, I'm kind of a little bit pessimistic, but I know a lot of people have raved about this book, so I'll try to keep an open mind about it. Next, I've also read a couple books by this author because they're both on the top 1000 list, Treasured and Kidnapped. But this third book on the top 1000 list is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. So of reading reviews of Robert Stevenson's books, everyone was like, oh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is my favorite and it's a real short book. So I'm pretty optimistic about this one. We will see. It's also great being so short, about 100 pages, that I could probably read it pretty quick in about three or four days. So that is good because I'm about two or three books behind my 2023 reading goal. Next is One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solvenitistin. Um, sorry, I had to look at the book the whole time because I just did not know how to pronounce any of that. But anyway, this book, I do not know a thing about it. Next, I've actually tried to read this book and I think I actually read about 150 pages and I mention it in one of my recent videos. I think it's 10 DNFs I may give another try or something like that. And the book is O oh Pioneers by Willa Cather. The reason I was interested in trying this again, even though I read about 150 pages, is because I have a signed book by Willa Cather, Obscure Destinies. So I kind of wanted to give it another try. I know Willa Cather is kind of a classic American writer and I am really stoked that I have a signed book by her. So I wanted to give this book another try. I don't know if I will actually try starting from the beginning or just like start like in the middle, like a hundred pages and just resume reading and just hope, you know, I kind of remember as I go. I don't know because 100, 150 pages is a lot of book to slog through if I've already read it. So I don't know. I don't know what I'll do. I don't really remember much of anything about it. I mean, I can't tell you a single character's name from this book. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just start reading and if it's real fresh to me, then I'll just skip ahead till I reach a point where it's like, okay, I don't really remember reading this. But anyway, we'll see. So this is actually going to be a real like low priority read, but I would like to get to it at some point. 
Next, another book that was mentioned in that 10 DNFs video, but I saw it at the bookstore and I flipped through it, and the issues that I had with the book, in particular capitalization of nouns, was not in this edition. So when I saw this book I was kind of like, mm, maybe I'll give it a try. Also, a big problem of why I DNF'd this book in particular coming up is because the first five sentences were just absurdly long. Well, I flipped through the book and after that the sentences weren't really bad. It was just like regular sentences really. So that book is Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. So I don't know if this book actually like cuts up or breaks up any of the sentences, but since it is not like every other word capitalized, I think I will definitely be able to give it a much better chance this go around. So I would say this is about a medium priority read, but I'll finally be able to really give it an honest chance. And finally, last on the book haul is I guess a quintology? I don't know what to call it. A set of four books. But that is, I don't even know the name of the series, but it's by Lawrence Dorrell. So the books are Mount Olive, Justine, Clea, and Balthazar. I don't know which is the first book in the series. I don't know anything about what this series is about. I know I could have probably just picked the first book in the series and read it and see if I even like it to go back and read the other books, but all four of these books are on the top 1000 list. So I do want to try to be diligent about it and that should also tell you, you know, I should, when I read the first book, try to be patient with it because I know I want to read all of the books in the series and so I just cannot DNF the first book unless I absolutely hate it. So I am going to try to give it a genuine chance, but I don't know, it's four books. I don't know why it's actually four books listed, because I mean like the Harry Potter series, it just lists Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, aka Sorcerer's Stone, as the recommended read on the top 1000 list. So it just says one Harry Potter book. It doesn't say all of them, but for these books it says all of them. Anyway, so that is it for the book haul. No signed books this time. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.